just about Christmas. And every Christmas Eve, I put out milk and cookies for Santa. Now the reason I do it is, well, it's, it's a good reason to me. And listen to my story and decide for yourself if you want to start putting out milk and cookies for Santa as well. Uh, I've done it for over 30 years every year. So, here's the story. Now imagine back in the mid 80's I was a um, uh, private in the army and I was at Fort Hood, Texas. So just before Christmas, it's kind of quiet on the base. I had run into a friend earlier in the day and we decided to go get an early Christmas dinner. So I pick him up uh, in my new car, new to me, Volkswagen Beetle, and proceed to drive towards the front gate so we can get some gas and go to a restaurant. And well, not being familiar with the streets, I proceed to get us lost and we run out of gas. So here we are, uh, Mitchell and myself, hitchhiking in one of the residential areas of the base. <clears throat> and nobody's picking us up. It's getting dark, it's raining, it's turning to like freezing rain and sleet. Uh, it was just a horrible evening. Well, lo and behold, this car comes by, this little little one, and comes tearing to a stop and backs up. And you can see the guy in the vehicle you know, making gestures, hurry up, hurry up, get in. So we race up to the car, and I open the car door, and here is a gentleman with, you know, like the red cheeks and the red nose and the beard and I mean it looked like Santa uh, and he is taking a Santa suit a wool one with all the little repairs and patches and stains on it and throwing it in the back seat well I pull the seat forward my friend Mitchell gets in the uh, back he steps over the boots that are behind the passenger side and he sits behind Santa next to the suit and uh, Mitchell later told me that what I saw was correct it was a beautiful suit wool with all the repairs I mean it's just stunningly gorgeous and the leather work is like exquisite on the belt and it's just a stunning suit so we climb in and Santa asks us what are you boys doing you know out on a night like this and so we tell him you know that I got us lost and ran out of gas and you know we're trying to get to the front gate so I can get some gas and come back and he offers to take us and he also says well you can you don't need to buy a can you can just use the can that I have in the back well there was no can in the back. I saw that there was nothing there but boots. My friend Mitchell is sitting back there. He would have seen it. He didn't see a gas can. Well, my friend Mitchell looks down and right next to him, on top of a wet shoe print of his that he made getting in the vehicle, was a brand new gas can. So we're kind of flabbergasted. <clears throat> So, we say thank you, and he proceeds to drive us off base. Well, as we're driving <clears throat> back, I ask him, well, what are you doing here? Don't you have a big delivery to make fairly soon? And he laughs, and he's like, well, Jerry, I do, but I always like to check my route. Okay, I never told him my name. There's... 
So how he knew my name, I don't know. Uh, so I just, I'm like, I'm not even going to go there. That's such a perfect answer. So I'm not going to question that or anything. I'm just going to go, uh-huh, okay. Uh, kind of starstruck. Or, uh, so we get back to my vehicle after he drops us off. We fill it, get it running. <coughs> it takes a couple of minutes to warm up. So I'm putting the gas can back in his vehicle uh, where he was waiting next to us and I try to give him a few dollars for uh, the help and stuff and he's like oh I'm not interested. I was like well can I you know like get you a gift certificate or something you know it's like can I mail it to you? Uh, what's your address? Uh, I should have seen this one coming a long ways, you know, way before I asked the question. He's like, oh, just drop in the mail and just write Santa North Pole on it. I'll get it. I'm like, okay. Uh, I did actually buy a $20 gift certificate, drop it in the mail with just Santa North Pole on it. Uh, I really did do that. Uh, so I hope he did get it, and I hope he enjoyed his meal. But I then told him, you know, I know a lot of people will not believe me, but I will tell this story to everyone. And they'll, they'll never believe me. And he agreed. They probably wouldn't. But I said to him as well, I think you are Santa. I think this falls under the heading of a Christmas miracle. I'm going to tell everybody I know that I met Santa and I'm going to put out milk and cookies for you every year from now on. Every year. And I'll tell everybody why I did it. Uh, and I have ever since. And. I've told the story to many of an adult and many, many kids. And I, to this day, I still, every Christmas Eve, milk and cookies for Santa. Uh, that's just what I do. And I hope this, you know, thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I hope this inspires you to do the same thing. And remember, the Christmas spirit has nothing it has nothing to do with whether Santa is real or not. I think he is because I think I met him, the real one. A lot of people don't, but that doesn't mean he's not out there. And he's and he's watching over people and I hope the story inspires you to put out milk and cookies. It's, I think that's where I'm going. I hope this is an inspiring story. And, uh, well, I guess that's it. So, uh, milk and cookies, people. Remember, Santa is real. So, and he's there and he's watching. Thank you very much. Okay.